So today I did some digging on how the invisible room transition actors work and I want to share a little bit of what I learned. Um, some of this info might be known, I'm not sure, but it'll be cool to have it all in one place anyway. So in this game there are a few different ways you can change rooms, um, including doors and the black loading planes that you see in Lost Woods. Uh, the ones I'm looking at today are these invisible ones that uh, instantly change the room. You'll notice that I'm in the bottom room with the well, and then the map changes and I'm in the new room up here. So I'm just going to share a little bit of what I learned about how these work. I want to note that I only looked into this specific uh, loading transition actor, and it's very possible that this info does not apply to all of them. So I have here on the right a very simplified version of what the code is actually doing to uh, make all these checks to load the room. And I'm going to step through it line by line and try to help make it easier to visualize. So we have on this first line here, if xz distance from link is less than 120. So in this game, the x and z axis is on the ground. It's the ground plane. And every actor is keeping track of how far link is away from it on each axis. So all this is saying is if link is within 120 units of it, on the ground plane. So not considering height, if he's within 120 units, this check is true. I'm going to draw it, and this is not going to be to scale or anything, but let's say that the origin of the loading plane is right here, and this is 120 units. If link is within this radius, this check is passed, and we can move on to the next one. Now, this first check was on the XZ plane, so on the ground. And these next two, or next three rather, are gonna be concerning height. So I'm gonna to switch to this image instead, which is gonna show this from a different angle. Now remember, at all times we have this check running for Link to be within a certain radius of it, but I'm not gonna include that in the image. Just keep in mind that Link has to be within 120 units on this plane. So again, this image is not accurate or to scale, but let's say that the origin of the loading plane is right here, the blue line. Our next check is if the absolute value of the y distance from link is less than 200. What this means is if we take the origin point and go plus 200 units or minus 200 units, like so, if link is within this range, our check is passed. If he's plus 200 or minus 200 from the middle. So if you meet this check of being within 200 units of the loading actor, you then move on to the next check, which is if the absolute value of the y distance from link is greater than 50. What this is saying is, if you are above 50 units from the origin, or below 50 units of the origin, then this condition is met and you can move on. So this nicely splits up our load actor into two different zones. And now for the final check, it will check if the y distance from link is greater than or equal to zero. If this is true, then this room index value is going to be zero. And if it's negative, below zero, it will be one. And these two values correspond to the front room and back room of the loading plane. So before we can load the room, we have one final check we have to make. And that is that the current room that you are in is not equal to the room that you are trying to load. So in the case that you jump into the well and are sinking down, you'll sink down here and you'll get into the area for loading the top room, but since your current room is already equal to the top room, because you're already up here, being in here does nothing. And you'll keep sinking down until you hit the bottom area, and in this case, your current room does not equal the room corresponding to the bottom here. So at this point, room 9, which is the well area, is loaded. And going the other way, if you're floating up, 
You'll hit this area pretty early, but since your current room is equal to the room that this area corresponds to, nothing will happen. And you'll keep floating up until you hit this area here, in which case your current room, room 9, does not equal room 8 up here, so it will load the top area. So just to summarize, with this specific case, you have a constant check that link is within a certain radius on the ground plane of the transition actor. And this ground plane check extends infinitely up and down. So you have this radius and up and down, you have to be within this certain range, right? And then you have the check for being plus or minus 200 units above or below the loading transition actor. And then you have the final check of being 50 units above or below the origin of the transition actor, which create two nice little areas which correspond to your front and back rooms, or in this case, top and bottom room. So the system works pretty well. But uh, things get interesting when you can change what room you're technically in. So lots of people know the rocket chest glitch. And this is something that I'm going to get into in a different video. But just to give a sneak peek, um, let's say you do Din's fire actor glitch to then open that door. And if I use the practice ROM and go to the scene menu, you'll see that my current room is technically 2, which in this case is the main room with the elevator. So I'm standing in room 8. The game thinks I'm in room 2. So what this means as far as the loading transition goes is that once I reach the top loading plane here all these conditions are going to be met and it's going to check if the current room is equal to the room that I'm trying to load even though I'm standing in room 8 it thinks I'm in room 2 so this check will pass and it will load this room again and doing that will load two chests on top of each other which cause the rocket chest glitch um, at a later date, I'm going to figure out exactly why having two chests loaded on top of each other does this. But for now, that's how the glitches started.